Hey, and welcome back to Alltel's range of hardware videos focusing on the Yealink T48G series handset. Today we're going to be going through some tutorials on how to actually use the handset, some of the features and you actually get to see them in action. Just as an FYI, some of the features and abilities we're going to be showing you today may require some specific licensing in order to work, so if you want to know more information on how to access them, give me or one of our other experts a call and we'll walk you through it. Most importantly, don't be scared off by any of the features this handset brings to the table. It can do as much or as little as you need it to, and if you just want to be able to answer calls, when a call comes in, pick up, talk, when you're done, hang up. It's that simple. So, stay tuned for our first lesson where we're going to walk you through the basic use of the handset. So, first things first, I'm going to walk you through what all these buttons do, starting with the number pad. You should already be aware that you use these for actually dialing someone, which can be a full phone number or the extension of another staff member. But did you know that you can press the hash key to tell the phone that you've finished dialing? This comes in handy if you're dialing a phone number which the phone doesn't recognise. Though don't worry, if you don't press the hash key after dialing a number the phone doesn't recognise, it will still send the call after a short delay. Over to the right here, you can see the four arrow keys for navigating text fields. They're mostly just text fields as this is a touch screen so most of the controls are done through there. These keys can also be used to quickly access your phone book and call history. How? I hear you ask your computer screen. Well, if you press the up key, you'll be taken to your call history where you can see all the calls you've made, missed and received. These are stored on our server, which means that they're not lost when the phone reboots and will be remembered for the last 20 placed, missed and received calls. The down key will bring up your local and server-based phone books. As you can see here, the local server is currently empty. Looking below your local contacts though, you'll see the network directory. This is where you'll find the network contacts that are stored on our servers, as well as a list of all the contacts within your organisation on our network. You can use the arrow keys on the right here to change pages. The cross key below the arrow keys is your cancel and back key. You can use this to back out of any menu, hang up calls and cancel what you're currently doing. Back up here, you have the OK button. This is your enter key, which can be used as a highlight option when using the arrow keys for navigation. It will also display the phone's basic information when pressed at the main idle screen. This is extremely useful for troubleshooting, as you can see if your phone has an IP address. If it doesn't, then there's possibly something wrong with your network. What its MAC address is, which you can see here. This is basically the ID that is unique to that phone, and the firmware version here, which is basically the operating system of the handset. We'll just hit that X again to go back to the main screen. Moving further down, we have the volume buttons. This will adjust the volume of whichever location you happen to be in. So at the idle screen, it will adjust your ring volume. On the speakerphone, it will adjust the speaker volume. With the handset lifted, it will adjust the handset volume. And whilst on a headset, it will adjust the headset volume. Jumping across to the right here, we have the headset button. Whilst that is lit up, the phone will send all calls through to the connected headset. You can press the speaker button or pick up the handset if you'd like to move the call to that location. Then, if you'd like to move it back, just press the headset button again. Then hang up the handset and you'll have the call back on your headset. We'll just end that call. This is the mute button, which is perfect for those times when you need to sneeze, cough or quickly talk to somebody without interrupting the phone call. It will remain lit up when active and you just press it again to unmute. So obviously you want to make sure that that light is on before you lean across to your workmate to make any comments. This button here will dial your voicemail. From here you'll be able to change your recorded greetings and some of your basic settings. This is your hold button. Press it once to put the active call on hold where they will hear your custom hold music and messages or our default music on hold. Whilst they're on hold, they won't be able to hear you when you'd like to retrieve the call again, just press the hold button again or select resume soft key from down the bottom of your screen, which we'll cover a little bit later on. This is your redial key. Press this to bring up a list of your placed calls. Press it again if you'd just like to dial the last dialed number. And this is your transfer key, which will allow you to send an active call to another internal or external phone number, which we'll cover later in the video. 
And finally, we have the speaker button, which will place the active call on speakerphone. So we've covered the physical keys, now we're going to have a bit of a look at the soft keys down the bottom of the screen. These will change based on the current state of the phone, such as when you're on a call, on a hold, idle, and across all other states. We'll cover the different keys in each state later, so for now, let's just work through the idle screen. So this is the screen you should see when you're not using your phone. The buttons may change slightly depending on your setup, but this should cover the basics. Our first soft key is a shortcut through to the call logs, which accesses your dialed, received and missed call logs. This login key will be displayed when you're part of a call centre. You can press this to sign in to be able to receive calls. Once you do that, you'll see that the button has changed to say log out, which you would do at the end of the day to sign out of the call centre. This new unavailable button will allow you to set yourself as unavailable and gives you the option to select a reason code, which can be customised per company. This is used for call centre reporting, where you can see when an agent has started work, ended work and how long each break was, where they were not receiving phone calls. If these are not being used, then just pressing OK will be enough to set yourself as unavailable. Now, being the smart keys that they are, you can see that the unavailable key has changed to available. Pressing that will put you back in the call centre to receive calls. Now we'll just sign out of here to continue on our merry little way. The next one across is the D&D soft key. This stands for Do Not Disturb, rather than Dungeons and Dragons, and will set your phone line as busy, meaning that your phone acts like it's on a call. So inbound calls will do whatever you have set up to happen when you're on a call. But as a side note, if you have call waiting enabled, you still won't receive calls whilst your D&D is enabled. Once pressed, you'll see a little red icon appears at the top of the screen here to indicate that you're on Do Not Disturb. Just press the key again to disable D&D. Next in line is the more key. This will appear when there are more than five soft keys available. Pressing this will show you the extra keys. So now you can see we have the menu soft key. This will bring up the phone's menu systems. You can change the basic settings of the phone here, as well as access your advanced VoIP features by selecting features. Here you can change your call forwarding settings, simultaneous ringing, remote office, and a number of other features that can enhance how you use your handset. Whenever you see this little house icon down the bottom right, that's just a way to return back to the idle screen. This one over here will just return you to the previous menu, just the same as if you were to press the X key. Almost at the end of our little soft key journey, we have the BSFT DIR, which stands for the Broadsoft Directory. This just brings up the network directory where you can find all your contacts within the business. Finally, you have the more key, and this will just take you back to the first page of soft keys. Moving on to the left here, we have the BLF keys, and this stands for Busy Lamp Field, and it will display all the other members of your organisation and show you if they're on or off a phone call, or if their phone is currently ringing. You can use this list for quick dialing by pressing the key of the person you wish to dial. Or, if you see one of the lines ringing, you can do a directed call pickup just by pressing their name. And there we go, we've taken over the call. If you find that not all the users are displayed on your screen, then you can just press the DSS key down here to show you the rest. And if there's more than 28 lines, you'll have a little button down here which will let you go to the next page. Now we move on to actually using the phone as a phone. No, no, who would have thunk it? What we're gonna do now is show you how to make a basic phone call. First, we pick up the handset. You see that the screen changes to give you an on-screen dialing pad, and the soft keys change to allow you quick access to your history and your directory. For this instance, we're just gonna use the physical keys, dial in the number we wanna call, As you can see, we've dialed the number shown on screen and the soft keys have changed to represent the various options you have on the call. In this sample case, we just talk to the person who answered and either press the end call to end the call, hit the cross down here, or simply hang up the handset. At which point you've now completed the call and you're back to the idle screen. In this next call, we're gonna put the caller on hold, then bring them back and end the call. But this time we're going to dial out using one of the BLF keys. So this time let's call Locke. The BLF shows that she's not on a call, so we'll simply press the BLF key to dial her.
Now that we have the core connected, you can see that the soft keys have changed accordingly. So let's say you've been asked an existential question that requires you to look something up. You can put the caller on hold by pressing either the hold soft key here or the physical key here. Now the caller is on hold, you'll see the soft keys down the bottom here have changed. But in this case, we're done with our research and we want to return to the call. You can either press the resume soft key here or you can just press the physical hold key again to return to the call. You can now end the call when you're done by pressing the end call soft key by hanging up the handset or just pressing the X down here. Here we can see an incoming call from lock. Now we can answer using the answer soft key down here. This will answer via the headset or the speaker phone, depending on which one's selected. At the moment, the headset selected, so it would come through to there. Or we could just press this to answer here, press the speaker to answer on the speaker, or in this case, just lift up the handset to answer the call via the handset. So you can see we're on a call now. We've got our usual selection of soft keys down the bottom here. In this case, we want to use the transfer key. Now we could transfer it to somebody from our call history, somebody from our online directory or local directory, but in this case, we want to transfer it using the keys. You see, while it's transferring, we could either complete the transfer and let them take it straight away, cancel that, but in this case, we're going to wait for them to answer. Okay, now that we're on a call with Trooper, we could press hold here to put him on hold, get some more information if we need to, then come back to him before doing, completing the transfer. We have conference, which would join the two calls together so that we have a three-way conference. We could end the call, which just cancels this transfer and will take me back to the first caller. But in this case, we just want to hit transfer to complete that transfer. Now that we're back to the idle screen, we could just hang up the handset. You can see over here, Tube is currently talking on a phone call thanks to the BLF keys. And when that's done, that'll just disappear. And there we go. In this quick little example, we're gonna go through and do a blind transfer. If you're struggling with transfers, rewind the video a little bit and see the how to receive a call and how to perform an announced transfer tutorial before this one. So you can see that there's a call coming in. Let's just answer that one. So you're on an active call now and you wanna transfer it through to Chupa. If you're feeling a little sheepish and you don't wanna to talk to him, or there's no need for an announced transfer, all you need to do is press the transfer button as normal, or the physical key down here, Dial in the extension you're after, and just press transfer before it sends. You'll see the call's gone through, you're back to your idle screen, and they're both talking to each other. Now, when you're transferring, you don't happen to press transfer in time, and it sends the call through, don't worry about it. Just wait for it to connect. When you hear ringing, press transfer to complete the transfer, and it'll go through just like a blind transfer. In this next tutorial, we're going to cover conference calling. This is really easy to do and almost the same process as an announced transfer. So the aim of this is to get Tuber on a call and lock on the call and then create a three-way conference. So to get this party started, we're going to start by calling Tuber. We're going to do this through the Broadsoft directory. So we're going to press more, Broadsoft directory, find Tuber, and just touch that. That'll be coming through, so we'll just wait for Tuber to answer. Now we're going to try and conference in lock using the conference soft key down the bottom here. We'll go to the directory, network directory, find them on second page, and we'll just press there. So now we're calling lock as normal, wait for them to answer, and there we go. So in here we could do our transfer using the soft key down the bottom here, but in this case we want to do conference. Now you can see that all three of us are in a call. So now that the conference call is active, you'll see that we've got both calls down here. We've got two little symbols under each of those. You can press that to mute that person so that they can't say anything to the rest of the conference. Or you can press the X to just eject that one person out of the conference, leaving you with just the one person to talk to. Down the bottom here, you can find the hold soft key. This will mute and unmute everybody, but not play any hold music. That also means that they can't talk to each other. If you just needed to step away and didn't want to mute the entire conference, you could just press the mute button here and walk away. They'd still be able to talk, but you won't be having anything come through your microphone. Next, we have the split soft key. This would just put the two calls back on your handset separately. So it's as if you had them on two separate calls, you can bounce between the two of them, but it'll break up the conference. 
Lastly, we have the end call soft key down the bottom here. This will hang up my phone, but leave the conference intact, letting the other two people talk to each other. So I'll just do that now. And we're back to the idle screen. So here's the scenario. You've answered a call as normal, but you have call waiting enabled and a second call comes through. You can see down the bottom here is the second call coming in from lock. We can select that. You'll see our soft keys change to give us the options there. We could reject it, sending it to voicemail or whatever our BIS settings are. We could silence it, which just lets it rings in the background and just gets out of the way. We could forward it elsewhere, maybe onto another number or onto another user, or in this case, we can answer it. Now this has put the first caller automatically on hold, and now we're talking to lock. Now if I want to switch back to the first call, I just select that call, come down here and press resume. Now that will automatically put lock on hold and return me back to the original call. So let's just put that one back on hold. So now we have both calls on hold. We have the options we can choose down the bottom here. I can just immediately end that call without talking to the person. I can make a new call if I wanted to. Resume, so go back, take them off hold, or I could transfer them somewhere else. If we were to hit that, see over here, that's the other active call. I could press that and join the two calls together into a transfer. Alternatively, I could select the second call, let's say, talk to them a little bit, then I could conference them in and create a new conference between the three of us. So let's say we've dealt with Locke's query, we can just end that call. This call's still on hold. Now we can just continue this as usual. We'll resume that, and let's just end that call too. So we've covered a good range of features which this handset brings to the table. There are more, but for the time being, there should be plenty to get you up and running. Hope you've enjoyed our little series on the Yaelink T48G series of handsets. Stay tuned, we will be covering a new handset in our next range of videos. And until then, if you've got any questions, give us a call. Take care, and I'll see you later.